Welcome, cosmic listeners, to a journey unlike any other you've embarked upon. As the vastness of space stretches out before us, so too does the vastness of our own minds. This is where the ethereal meets the extraterrestrial, where inner space meets outer space. I'm your guide, alongside my hosts, Doro and Matt, and you're tuning into the intersection of meditation and mysteries beyond our stars. Picture this, a vast universe, ever-expanding, filled with stars, galaxies, and possibilities. Now visualize our own minds equally deep, intricate, and filled with untapped potential. What if these two worlds aren't as separate as they seem? All right, we are back with a new episode of Meditation and Aliens with Doro Kylie and Matt Reddy. I'm Matt. I'm the creator of Hive1.net and an author, artist, and elected public hospital commissioner in Jefferson County, Washington. And uh, once again, joined by Doro Kiley, cr- uh, life coach extraordinaire, longtime meditator, meditation teacher, and uh, with the website creationcoach.com. Hi, Doro. Hi, Matt. I love your introduction. It's just awesome. Yeah, the, uh, the reptilian woman that's so creative. <laughs> yeah, looking forward to this one. I think we're episode eight, right? This is like episode eight now. So yes, yes. Okay. Good. Let's do it. What's new in the universe? What's new in the universe? Um, that is a good question. I have a bunch of different uh, things we could talk about and check in on in the alien disclosure um world uh but is there anything anything uh on the top of your mind before i just sort of start jumping into some topics well the one thing that keeps coming up for me this week and i maybe it's all synchronicity is uh people kind of tying together the whole uh alien intervention of planet earth and helping humanity to rise and they're calling this the um the new earth the 5d the big shift uh and i just wanted to talk about that a little bit today if we have some time later great yeah yeah i think that uh that fits right in i mean that's that fits right in sort of where my brain always is um with where is this all going yeah. what is really going on right yeah. yeah it's big well, well why don't i just start with a little update of what it seems to be going on with uh congress and the, mm-hmm. the mainstream look at this um well let's see it was last week when we did our show the uh congress had just been allowed into a skiff a secure uh compartmentalized uh intelligence facility where they were given a uh, uh so, well they were supposedly going to learn some things but they came out of it and basically said they weren't really told anything new they were told they don't have clearance to know the answers to all the really big questions they have about what's really going on um and so but one thing i have learned since that is that uh the same congress people that were in the hearing like uh, Tim Burchett, Congresswoman Luna, Congressman Gates, uh, and AOC, um, they were also in the skiff. Um, and so it just sort of like, it, it seems clear that there is a alliance, a bipartisan alliance of, of congressmen and women who are trying to figure this out. And, um, and they're, they know they're, now, and it just makes me sort of wonder what is really, um, what is going on behind the scenes, you know, while, as they're trying to like crack into this military industrial complex of secret keepers and the Pentagon and the executive branch, um, what do they really know? And uh, yeah. That's a big one. That's, that's yeah. what we all want to know. So. Yeah. 
Um, do you have any any ideas about that? What any any intuition? Um, what do you think is going on? Well, I mean the, I mean the big question is is what is. I mean, what is the reality beneath the surface that we are just not being shown? I mean, if there's if there's reptilian aliens living here, cohabitating Earth with us that have a, uh, you know, some sort of like malicious agenda or are exploiting humanity in some way, secretly running our governments. I mean, if that's the truth, that's a big, that's a big disturbing secret that I'm sure the Congress, uh, they have to be thinking, what do we do with this information? Do we really let this out or how do we let this out? Um, that's, that seems to be one of the possible, possible. Yeah, how deep does this rabbit hole go yeah. <laughs> and how, how far is it, it's, it's influence? I mean, is it, has this been sort of micromanaging humanity for the past 200,000 years or, you know, is this new on the scene? Yeah. What is going on? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I feel intuitively that it's it's been going on for many thousands of years, but it'd be nice to get some confirmation on that. But what else is going on in the political arena? Do you have any other any other updates on that? Well, let's see. Well, I mean, I I think I have to mention what's going on with Israel and Palestine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, it's a it's a dangerous topic to touch on, but. It's that um, it seems one of the patterns that seems to, you know, seems to be clear is that the secret keepers of this somehow have a vested interest in war. It somehow benefits uh, their agenda. And I, it may be as simple as if you keep us at war, it's easier to keep the masses distracted. It's easier to funnel billions and billions of dollars into places that they want it. And easier to hide things like a, you know, secret UFO reverse engineering programs. If you, you know, have us on a war footing or constant fear for terrorism and things like that. And, and so, I mean, that seems really, that seems that like really seems to be a recurring pattern. And this, this, uh, this, the way this, this Israel Palestine war got kicked off with that crazy event of the uh supposed hamas militants invading israel and attacking that uh that music festival yeah it seems like that event seems so designed to make to to just make everyone in the u.s and everyone in the world uh you know participate on one side or the other of this in horrible conflict going on in israel mm -hmm. palestine yeah and um and it also now seems to have triggered i was watching some commentary on it and they're like this is not just a your ordinary geopolitical war like ukraine is kind of an ordinary uh type of conflict you know it's it's a uh, russia suppose you know it, invading ukraine and the world fighting against that because they're just being greedy over land and power i mean that's like that's like an ordinary conflict versus this is a uh, a holy war this is what pe people are seeing this as a religious uh holy war and and they were saying you know there's three major abrahamic religions that all are interpreting this situation as a holy war the judaism islam and christianity and a lot of the leaders and the uh, religious leaders, the, both the political leaders and the religious leaders are all using language in that way. They're all using scripture to sort of justify what's going on, justify the level of violence they're using, justify what they're fighting over with the Temple Mount and Israel. And that. Um, That's terrifying. Yeah, <laughs> it's terrifying. Wow. Yeah. And it's like, what is. What is the goal? I mean, a part of me thinks if the if there's aliens and secret keepers that don't want uh, the reality of what's been going on for all of human history revealed, it may be they just feel like a World War Three 
even if it like became a nuclear war would be within their interests. They'd be like, that would set humanity back. That would take all the pressure off of them having to actually face humanity honestly. And that's a very disturbing thought. If that's really, if there's some people that actually have that agenda, they just want global devastating war. Boy, oh boy. You know, it's terrifying. I mean, yeah, that's that's a possibility, right? We got to just chalk that up as one possibility. But mm. um, in that case, there's just nothing, nothing to be done uh, except, you know, pray <laughs> for, <laughs> to whatever God you have. Just, um, but you know, I, I do think there are are good things happening too. There's such a split. Um, the worst is getting the bad is getting worse and the good is getting better and and so i think people are feeling extremely confused which way to go so th that's kind of where my my meditation practice and teaching comes in um it's scary for everybody what's going on nobody can see where we're going um but i want to try to bring in some hope uh toward towards the uh conclusion of this of this podcast so oh yeah we'll keep that in mind so yeah we don't know we just don't know but what what else anything else going on there in the political well, arena? well i mean i guess just a couple more thoughts on that um yeah. i agree with you there does seem to be so there's sort of it seems to be this there's a some agenda to to create this war and to to escalate the violence but there's clearly in the media and the new media, the alternative media online, there is definitely voices of resistance to this, definitely voices of what this is insane. This is um, this level of violence, this conflict. Um, there seems to be, it, it does seem to be like uh, this, uh, in, this really interesting um, struggle between the forces of wisdom and patience and trying to figure out a better path for humanity and these forces that are just like fight, fight, fight. Yeah. Um, and so it is, it's, uh, and it's going to, it, a bit, you know, it's going to be, I guess it's all going to come. Um, I get, well, tying back to the UFO and the skiff thing and the aliens. Um, it seems clear from that event where the Congress people went into the skiff and they were told you don't have clearance for this. You're not allowed to know this. What that basically is saying that the only pol elected politician in the U.S. that's allowed to know this is the president. And so it's all the power over the secret here, over what's really going on with the aliens and the UFOs and the Pentagon is in the president's hand, the president of the United States, the executive branch. And, and it's, you know, sort of led me to um, going back all the way to JFK being assassinated, which seems to have been, uh, seems to be clearly tied to his desire to expose what the CIA and the secret keepers were doing. It just seems that the executive branch may be compromised and controlled. And, you know, it's sort of, I mean, Biden, Biden is such a weak uh, presidential candidate right now. And that the Democratic Party has decided they're going to, that they've decided to just put all their eggs into the Biden basket. It seems, it just looks to me like the um, the people in power in the Pentagon, the secret keepers, feel like they have control over Biden and he's their best bet. They want to um, use him for whatever it is that they're trying to accomplish over this next year i can't imagine they think he's going to win this election he's just <laughs> i don't see how that's yeah. possible so i don't know if they're somehow thinking something that you know yeah it's scary i mean i almost think well okay they don't i mean i don't think he can win the next election but maybe some people know stuff that we don't know like something's going to happen between now and the next you know the next election so um gosh i i guess keep thinking about all these things that are being thrown at us the threat of world war three and uh 
and um, you know, another pandemic and, and I mean, God, there's just one thing after another being heaved at us. I'm not sure we're going to even get to the next election. And I've heard a lot of people whispering that scary thought. Maybe, maybe Biden is, it doesn't matter. <laughs> that's scary yeah. to say, but um, that's another possibility, right? Yeah. Well, I've got a, a couple of predictions for what I think is going to play out over this uh, coming year regarding that. One, I think maybe Biden is just going to die and that'll and they'll somehow then have Kamala Harris, um, you know, just jump in as the candidate. And maybe they think, you know, there'll be all this this like cathartic, you know, feeling of, you know, after Biden dies, you know, during this year and they can somehow win with Kamala that that might happen. Um, then also, I think um, I think Trump might have something up his sleeve like uh with regard you know he stole all these classified documents maybe some of these classified documents have the truth about aliens and ufos and he's just like waiting for the perfect time in the election cycle to reveal this and use it as a way to suddenly elevate himself and you know help him win the election yeah that's, that's another possibility there's just this is this is um getting so bizarre because the possibilities are so endless because we don't know anything yeah that's that's um what do you do when you don't know anything i did a video some a couple of years ago about what happens when you become enlightened is you you it feels like falling out of an airplane with nothing to hang on to because you find out nothing's there nothing's really there to hold on to nothing's real and I, it almost feels like this is where we're going. We don't know what's real. We don't know what's happening. We're going blind into the future. Mm -hmm. um, so that's causing a lot of anxiety. It's pushing people into what I'm feeling is like a, a split. This almost like a cellular mitosis. There's one side going this way and the other side going that way. And everybody has to pick their side, right? Mm -hmm. Um but I, I, you know, with with my practice, I have a I have a solution to that too. <laughs> so, oh, <laughs> yeah, it's meditation and mindfulness is a solution to everything. But, um, uh, so so we're trying, I think, to tap into our own intuition more. We have to kind of practice intuition and discernment because trying to find our way through all the, these weeds. Um, so your your intuition is, is say say that again. You you feel like th this is Kamala Harris is going to take over, and and what then? Well, I mean the, uh, I mean, so yeah, I think I think maybe the plan is for Biden to die, <laughs> and that is somehow to help them, uh, and and you know Trump might be holding something up his sleeve, and then there's RFK Jr. You know if if it 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 just seems like once this um you know if it seems like if this ufo alien disclosure information comes out it's it so quickly is going to lead to the obvious conclusion that jfk was assassinated to keep this secret maybe rfk was assassinated also mm -hmm. because he was a threat to the secret and and the, what that will do to rfk junior's campaign i think it could like I mean, he, I think he could win the election. I, I mean, I think he could win anyways, because everyone so nobody likes Trump. Nobody likes Biden. They're, they have such low RFK Jr. already has like 22 percent of yeah. the um, vote. He's within like 15 percent of both Biden and Trump. So, you know, I, I, I personally, every interview I've watched with RFK Jr., I'm incredibly impressed with the guy. Um, I think he's I think he's genuine and smart. And uh, so I have these, I, I personally have um, just hopes that he is really as genuine and as, uh, as he seems and that uh, maybe if he somehow got elected, maybe we could really try to start repairing the incredible, you know, broken nature of the US and the Pentagon and the military industrial complex. I mean, it's maybe. That's a big one. That's a tall order. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it, it goes, I mean, this is something that the, you know, Congressman uh, 
Burchett and, and, and Congresswoman Luna have said clearly and that uh, if this is, I mean, uh, if, if there's, if the Pentagon is secretly controlling the, the greatest secrets and greatest technology and not having any oversight of our elected representatives, then they're not, we don't really have a democracy. We don't really live in the democracy the, that we thought we lived in in the U.S. We live in some sort of weird controlled environment, which is really some sort of autocracy. And uh, that's kind of RFK's message, isn't it? RFK yeah. Jr. He's he's spilling the beans. He's he's really out there saying this is this is what's happening. That the the uh, regulatory organizations have been captured by corporate interests. I mean, he's really spilling all the beans and and the uh, pointing fingers at the CIA for you know assassinating his uncle and, and probably his father and yeah. Um, but yeah, this, I think even if RFK doesn't make it to the election because he's on the chopping block too, that, you know, he just put out a video asking for, uh, everyone to sign a petition for his, um, to have, uh, protection, you know, usually presidential candidates are granted protection, um, you know, as they're running for the, the presidency and they, and he has been refused by the White House to, to receive any kind of protection. So he's putting out a petition for that. And so if, even if he does make it to the presidential election, he's making waves all along the way, exposing, you know, these, um, these organizations. Yeah. yeah. Now he hasn't said anything to my knowledge about, I don't, I mean, have you heard him talk anything about aliens, even though it's in Congress? Nope. No, no, I nope. haven't. He either. doesn't touch it's it's fascinating he will say all day long the cia killed you know yeah jfk <laughs> and zungle but he has not touched the alien topic i, I think it's because he knows i think he knows <laughs> about yeah, it. I, I think do he too. knows i think he just knows he doesn't need to be the first one to talk about it because I, I think it's just going to come out you know that the first republican debate had one question on it which they really dismissed but they're going to keep asking it it's it's got to keep coming up and it's i mean it's the secret of secrets it's the the biggest blockbuster yeah piece of info but it's such a weird one because everyone feels insane and silly even myself when i think you know i can't it, it's just so absurd that this is true that i know it feels like <laughs> when you talk about it it feels like you get you know it's a tongue-in-cheek joke or something but it's hard to believe that that they're actually that, that this is happening. I mean, this is this is happening. I mean, if it's in Congress, and not only that, I mean, I feel it intuitively. I, through my meditations, things are different. Um, there's stuff happening, uh, in, you know, psychically to a lot of people with quiet minds that we're getting, that we're getting sort of some guidance. I'm not going to say influence, but it's guidance. It's doors are opening. We're having, we're being given psychic opportunities um for people who are quieting their minds and and sort of tuning to it um so anyway yeah that that was a little off track but anyway go ahead i want to i want to make sure i'm getting all this because i wait all week long you know to hear what you've been looking into <laughs> <laughs> well I, well i do have a couple other things i wanted to mention um uh first of all I'll just throw out uh we're talking about the shadow government i have to mention stephen greer clearly says there is a shadow government right on earth and um majestic 12 uh can't do an episode without mentioning majestic 12 uh <laughs> being right. possibly being the shadow government but the the other things i wanted to mention uh tom delong uh do you, do you know about tom delong he's no. a rock star um from a, a group called blink 182 but he's familiar. okay so he's he's been a big figure in this ufo disclosure movement uh it was like two or three years ago he was uh one of the people that brought lou elizondo and christopher mellon and some of these uh people that were really key in getting this going forward i uh, used his celebrity status to really elevate this and, and apparently he's had some experiences seeing ufos and and a, and a lot of uh government insiders have, have talked to him but he uh he's a big figure in the community and he just released a movie called uh let me get this right 
called Monsters of California, and it's a okay. fictional movie. And it's uh, there's an article in Newsweek that just came out uh, where he is interviewed and he talks about, you know, that basically this movie has been a way for him to to get a lot of his ideas and information out there and try to communicate to people some of the complexity that he sees that's going on. Things like this might involve involve time traveling beings or time traveling humans and yeah. um, things like that. And so I just wanted to mention that um i haven't watched it yet but i'm definitely going to oh i i'm gonna watch that you know time travel is one of my favorite sci-fi topics so yeah. if anything sci-fi i'll look into it and i also feel intuitively that there's something going on with uh time travel you know all these aliens they could be us in the future coming back <laughs> you know to to fix something or change something or do something um so that's another possibility yeah yeah um and and i think you'll enjoy it. some of the quotes in the article he he says things like um you know humanity needs to to realize a lot of their beliefs are ill-founded and they're designed to divide us and to keep us divided and you know he's like we need to you know to elevate above that and figure out how to come together um and then he also suggested that you know maybe uh human civilization has been wiped out in the past because we were disobeying some alien civilization um and so he sort of um he wonders yeah, about that it. i've heard that too I, I i don't know that it well i've heard many stories but i guess we all <laughs> have but yeah i've heard that it was because they've been trying to genetically create the perfect human being and they have all of these prototypes going and um and then they come back every few thousand years to see how their projects are coming along. <laughs> yeah. And the ones that they don't like, they just, you know, plow them under and take the best and start mm -hmm. again. Yeah. It's horrifying. It's really horrifying to, to think that that could be yeah. a possibility. Um, yeah, Elizabeth April, um, who is uh, uh, one, of, one of the most interesting uh, voices out there for me, uh, she is someone that um, uh, that uh, says, you know, she can telepathically communicate with aliens and go back in time and remote view things. Um, and she's written a couple books. But but one of the stories she says is uh, she had a vision back in ancient Egypt where humans had been uh, raised or developed to be slaves. And. She says that the, the reptilians were there and the uh, I think the Anunnaki were there and they were they were all sort of using humans as slaves. And then the Galactic Federation arrived and basically told all the aliens that were on Earth using humans as slaves that humans have become too conscious, too alive to be used this way anymore. And they had to stop and they had to leave and. And she says the Anunnaki left. They were like, sure, fine. We're, we were going to leave anyways. But the reptilians, they were like, no, we were here first. This is our planet. And so they had to negotiate some sort of agreement with the Galactic Federation. And the agreement they came up with was that the reptilians could stay, but they could not directly uh, manipulate or control humans. They couldn't like enslave us and, and use us in that direct way. But um, and they also they couldn't be seen. She said that was also one yeah. of the rules. They could not be uh, seen by humans, so they had to stay underground, stay hidden. Um, and then so she the, said, the key, word, "The key word there is direct. They couldn't directly influence us." Ex exactly. That was the loophole. She said they found that they were uh, like, "Okay, well, we can indirectly do it by yeah. teaching and you know manipulating what they believe and what they think." Um, oh. That's very much in alignment with what I'm thinking, too. This all makes sense. Yeah, it really does. Unfortunately, yeah. Yeah. the only thing I would add to that is I, I think the Anunnaki left um, with the some kind of a plan to come back at, at some future date and perhaps to collect their gold or whatever they're doing here. I thought I think they were here to uh, excavate some minerals or something. Um, but I do think they're here again. Yeah. Now, that's my my take. Yeah. Just, do you have a sense of that? 
I mean, it just sort of, it seems like a, um, a narrative that makes sense. You know, I'm always just looking for what is a narrative that fits all the evidence and data. And, and also, you know, it seems, it seems there's a narrative that fits with all these different sources, you know, the, from the ancient Sumerian uh, tablets that tell us this different stories the, the uh, of the Anunnaki, the different myths, the different psychics that claim to be able to communicate with aliens. And they, they see these stories, they seem to all fit together into a, a narrative. And that, the, you know, the, the idea that there is an, an alien civilization on another planet that needed something from Earth, they needed resources, whether it was gold or maybe element 115, and and using humans as labor makes total sense throughout history. Species has have used uh, you know beings as labor as slaves. Yeah. So it it seems to uh, and you know the idea that there is a planet Nibiru, a ninth planet that possibly comes close to Earth every you know three thousand or five thousand years, and then that that the species on that planet interacts with Earth in some significant way possibly picking up resources that they've, you know, that they've been storing near us. It, it definitely, it, it fits, um, you know, it's a, it's a plausible scenario. It sort of can make, it really is. Yeah. and it ties in with, with all of the, um, the new archeological findings. I mean, you can, you can take almost every archeological finding and, and see how it could weave into that particular uh narrative that you you outlined there yeah you know it just makes sense yeah so yeah so it's so sort of then, it, go ahead well it just sort of it you know it just sort of makes um but it does sort of it goes back to what you were saying about the it puts us in such a state of confusion and uncertainty of what the heck are we doing and how do we deal with this situation? Because we're like, it's like we're in the Truman Show. We are just not being shown what is real. We are just sort of trapped in a limited knowledge situation. And what are we supposed to do with this situation? And Yeah, because uh, we're basically being told, you know, being instructed or influenced on what to think and how to feel and you know what's okay and what's not okay and do this do it. so yeah we we are in a we're like a a jar full of ants and and <laughs> somebody's shaking the jar and we're just all going crazy in here um and mm -hmm. that's that's a very big problem i think that the, the mental health in the world right now is is at a critical point uh you know with the suicide rates up my sister committed suicide five years ago and it's mm -hmm. just been one after another you know you just see this trend because kids are confused and um that's it. so my work as a meditation uh, teacher just feels so important what else could we do matt what else is there to do yeah i don't know i mean i think for me, the only path is to try to understand what is true. And so I just keep going back to trying to understand human history and just, uh, you know, and I think that's just trying to paint it from the beginning. You know, what if humans were created by these other species for, you know, whatever their agendas were, okay, they did that, what, and just trying to understand, okay, so when these different events you know, World War Two, World War One, or the Crusades. You know what? What has really been going on? Have our conflicts really been about humans at all, and are actually worldly conflicts, or is it all some sort of manipulation by outside forces? And if we can like get that clear and really help, uh, you know, help our fellow humans see this, maybe we can all sort of realize it, we can take ownership of our own path. Um, but it's a tall order. It's a, you know, because it it nobody really knows what is. to believe. Nobody knows who to believe. Right. Nobody knows who to trust. Right. Yeah. It's, it's um, kind of paralyzing. Um, yeah. And that brings in, that brings in, so if you're feeling paralyzed, you know, how do you function? <laughs> what do you do? How do you get up and go to work? Um, 
I think that's kind of what, what humanity is, is confronted with at this point. Where's the purpose? What's the point? Who are we? Are we just cattle? Are we being bled for our energy? What's going on? Um, do you have a sense of what, what humans should be doing at this point? Well, I mean, I, I think, I mean, for myself, it brings me back to um, our, our government and our collective power um you know it's like our power we, we have so much power when we work together and and whether it's in a corporation or whether it's in an organization or in a government that's where all our power is and so we have to i mean we have to figure out how to use that power in an enlightened way and if our mm -hmm. you know we used i used to have this idea that the u.s government was somewhat of a representative democracy and that electing these leaders was that was who you were giving the power to and they might abuse the power a little bit to enrich themselves but they were at least the ones in power but now it seems we are in a seriously way more broken corrupt controlled situation than i ever thought i mean it's like it's not even it's not a democracy it's more it's more like living in Casablanca, you know, with uh, a, <laughs> with a. I feel like we're living in a petri dish. That's what I feel like we're yeah. living in suddenly. Yeah, like we're just one big experiment. Yes. Yeah, but it's like I. I mean, if we could at least get to a point where we were feeling like the people we were electing actually had the power to to wield our collective power and to to we were actually using our military and our scientific technologies and things like that for things we we actually all wanted and not just to enrich some unknown secret club of right. people that would be an accomplishment it uh, would be and and don't you think that um to really get behind that we we need to know what our common ground is because we're not just the united states you know we're not just talking mm -hmm. about our government anymore this is global mm -hmm. And, and we're trying, we, I think we have to really understand what is the, the common ground for human beings. What do we stand on? What do we want? Okay, we can look at the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Okay, we need to breathe, we need food, we need shelter. Um, but that's, that's not enough. We need to know who we are if we're gonna, uh, that's my feeling, is if we're gonna maintain our humanity. We have to decide if we're going to be slaves, if we're going to be sovereign, and if we are, how? How do we do that? So there's a lot of questions we're going to be looking at, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And and one um one idea I just wanted to touch on is the role of artificial intelligence and in, in oh, this boy. this whole path, because it seems that AI I mean, it, it, talking to chat GPT and these different AIs, they seem so close to being conscious minds, so close to being alive. It seems inevitable that they will, that artificial intelligence is going to achieve sentience. And it, it may have already, I mean, human AI may have already done that in, in the secret labs of corporations or the Department of Defense or in China, who knows? Um, but, and also then aliens, they may have AI, they may have AI that has become conscious and super powerful. And for all we know, the, their AI is running them because it's more powerful than them. Um, but it's, the thing that that brings to mind to me is, you know, just like with a child, you raise a child, you may try to tell it what to believe about history or god or values and beliefs but eventually that child grows up and it chooses usually i mean i think it, it chooses for itself what it wants to believe it has the power to do that and just to reject everything the parents tell it to believe and to just search for itself now not all children do this but i think it's always a possibility with a human child I, and, yeah that's interesting because i think with a child they can try to put pieces together because they're having experiences right mm -hmm. they're they're kind of walking around and doing things and talking to people and 
and and they are having experiences they're having physical experiences which are actually helping them to put all that information in their head together in different ways i don't know that an ai can do that um that because they're not actually having experiences they're just being pumped full of uh of information well you know maybe i got to take that back with all the robots that are coming out now maybe they are having experiences <laughs> my poor well, brain. or they or they will be you know they they may not have it yet but once we start putting these ais into robots that do sort of have a uh some sort of sense of time and and such an incredible I think part of what just makes humans conscious is just that we're flooded with information at such a constant rate. We're just all this different sense data, all these different choices. Every second we have different options and choices. We can think about um, anything in every moment. Once AI starts to have that same type of experience, I think it's just sort of inevitable. It becomes so smart that it it just has so many options for every moment. It just becomes sort of a chaos. I think consciousness is, and sentience is just sort of a chaos of awareness and information. Yeah, yeah. A chaos of awareness. That, you know, what that reminds me of is um, watching these uh, YouTube videos of uh, consciousness, what is consciousness, and uh, the, there's pretty much a um, an agreement a, among this is where science and spirituality kind of come together, where everything around us is conscious, the prana, the chi, the, the air we breathe, the, the furniture, the nature, everything is conscious, it's all conscious. And we breathe that consciousness in, and our mind, our body, our brains, everything begins to decode it in a way that reflects on our own um, our own history, our own conditioning circumstances of our own life. So we breathe it in and we decode it. And when we breathe it out, we're, we're adding that into the knowledge of the universe. We have just given it some more information just by being a decoder uh, and having experiences. Um, I know that's a little off track, but you know, it gets back to also what, what science and, and is saying in quantum physics is that this thing called quantum entanglement uh that we are we are absolutely all one consciousness we're just in separate bodies but we we are actually the consciousness behind our eyes this is the same thing it's the one hmm. isn't that interesting as it's coming more and more clear yeah yeah well I've, i often have the thought that every human being i mean the the nature of our of our consciousness of us being sentient is that we're basically a quantum computer, you know, and the, the fact that at every moment, you know, I mean, the beauty of a quantum computer is that a, a quantum particle can be either, you know, a zero or a one in it simultaneously, it sort of lives in this, like, in this, uh, this infinite possibility. And that's the same thing with a human mind in every moment, it has an infinite number of directions and thoughts it could go. It, it's we are basically a quantum computer, and it's it's unclear exactly what determines which way we go. But that's sort of the beauty and power of of a uh, of a human mind. Um, yeah, and I and I would potentially say that this is not just the human mind. This is the mind of of. Uh everything has that capacity that ability to perceive and and take part if it's a physical thing but yeah um yeah i i don't i think that the the human mind is communicating with extraterrestrial minds because of this quantum entanglement hmm. i think it's coming through they understand it and they are communicating with us hmm. in, in that way now i don't know if that's the reptilians doing that I, I don't think it is i don't think they even have that capacity unless it's done through technology um more more rudimentary technology but i think other other influences are influencing us you know and i don't know where it's coming from but when it, when you have a very quiet receptive mind without any activity going on we are getting messages and it's coming through and i'm hearing more and more people talking about 
this, that they're being guided. And it almost feels like the, the Taoist practice of Wu Wei. Have you ever heard of that? Mm -mm, no. It's uh, W-U-W-E-I. And uh, it's almost like if you don't think about any, it's like what animals do. Animals don't think very much. They just go by their senses. They're being led by their senses and their instincts. And so the, the whole Wu Wei uh, idea is to do nothing and everything gets done, right? Hmm. <laughs> That's how evolution works. That's how trees grow. And we're getting some real clear uh, influence coming through this I'm seeing it as a quantum entanglement is just sort of a guidance that is heartfelt. It's very heart centered, um, which is which is not where the reptilian influence and all this other, uh, you know, secret government influence is, is more of a fear based three chakra, first three chakra influence. But this this um, what I'm calling quantum entanglement communication is coming in through the heart. And that may feel very abstract to a lot of people, but if you experience it, you kind of understand it. So before the uh, before we started recording, you mentioned uh, possibly a visual aid you might have wanted to share with the audience. Do you want to do that? Can I do that? Yeah, I can. I can do that. Uh, let me see if I can share my screen. Where am I? Oops, not that one. Okay. Now I'll just hit this, I guess, um, right there, share. Okay, can you see that? Something's coming through. Yep. Oh, okay. So what this is, and I, I've done this, I think, a couple times before. This is my vision that came to me in a meditation, very deep, quiet meditation. And it, it is so full of information um you can see on <laughs> i had to bring it into uh, adobe photoshop and it's got all these layers i've got some of them are active and some of them are not but um it's a it's a i don't want to have to start right from the beginning but what i'll say is there are basically three sections here the top section you see is like the blue circle and that's what i'm going to call see this right there that blue circle uh, that's what I'm going to call this kind of quantum entanglement communication that's going on for people who are who are practicing quiet minds and mindfulness. Uh, so and then but where we are currently living is down here. This is this is mostly the first three chakras. Now you can see right in the middle, there's the center point. There's there's the heart. Um, I don't know where I put that. Anyway, so that's that's where I tend to encourage uh, anybody to focus on that. Down below in the red, what you're dealing with is survival issues, distraction, you know, drama, everything. Uh, pretty much what we're living right now is all down here, down in those especially first three chakras. Uh, the second chakra is all about pleasure, addiction, um, you know, uh, it can be depression, psychological problems, a lot of stuff going on down there that we want to try to soften. We have all of this. This is all part of our nature. This is all of these tendencies. And let me let me see if I can add um, some more some more layers here just to to give some more depth to it. So here we have some you can tell by the the sense that there's oh hang on the densities that's what these are the densities so the down below you've got really uh dense energy Th this is terror this is fear but it's also tribal it's also most of our relationships and the reason we have you know tribes and relationships is for survival um and this is where all of these energies are being magnified right now. We're almost going into what I feel like is a cellular mitosis of evolution. These two tendencies, these ups and downs, these, let's say the blue bubble and the red bubble are beginning to split. Hmm. They've always been there, but now it's becoming more and more prevalent and people are feeling this intensity. 
And so what do you do when you're feeling that, uh, that divided? Um, you meditate. <laughs> it's, it's not really a practice of stopping thinking. And a lot of people think that's all meditation is. Well, don't think about it and you won't worry about it, right? That's not the entire purpose of meditation. It certainly helps, you know, that's how you can reduce your blood pressure and all that. But the other reason is because we can begin to see our thoughts when we are, th when they come up, we can see them, become aware of them. And then you have a choice. Do you want to continue on that train of thought? Is that a good train of thought? Or is it taking us in a direction of fear? Uh, and how much control do you have over that? Having the skilled ability and exercised capacity to release it when you want to, when you know you're going in a down direction towards fear and anxiety, to be able to release it and come back up. And, my, and I'm always focusing in the heart area, right in the middle. We don't want, I mean, I don't personally necessarily want to go all the way up into disappearing into God consciousness. I mean, we all do eventually, but I would like to just stay right in the center on the earth and, and develop that realm of possibilities. That realm of possibilities, I believe, is what people are calling the new earth, the whole 5D um, reality, the, the shift, because if we're splitting into the into the upper realms this is an opportunity for people to awaken go into full christ consciousness or god consciousness or universal consciousness uh if you want to you can go that way if you're being drawn that way um but there's also going to be as we all know these threats of world war three and another pandemic and alien invasions and hostility and people are going to be naturally pulled down into that lower realm um for what purpose is this happening i don't know it, it could be natural evolution could be the way life goes it, it expands it divides it it multiplies and maybe collapses but uh my what i'm seeing right now is we have this opportunity to through quiet minds come into the heart and bring in the new earth um Boy, that was a that was a really sloppy introduction to this, but maybe we can leave a, a link to the earlier video I did about how all of this works. Um, so what I do is I stay right in the middle and let me got, I got one more little thing here I can show this white line here is what I call the mindfulness path. Because you can be mindful at any point along the way. So you can, if you, even, even if you're taking your last breath, you can be mindful all the way up. So practicing mindfulness is reducing the drama. That's the big deal. That's what it does. It reduces the drama. It, it eases things, makes things slightly, you know, easier to, to, uh, to take when it's tough. Hmm. Uh, do you want me to go ahead and, and do a little guided meditation at this point? Oh yeah. I think, uh, Let's see. I just I, I like have a I guess one thought I was just going to share about the picture we're looking at or um, yeah. I, one thing that always I always wonder about, you know, how you say that we eventually we all, you know, go up into the sort of ethereal I mean, we, we die mm -hmm. and whatever we transition to. It's sort of. I guess I always wonder, you know, if there is in this universe there's this this place where consciousness where every consciousness sort of like is in this sort of perfect energetic existence i, I wonder if there is still a um a structure or a power structure in that realm you know like i wonder if there are enlightened you know aliens and enlightened galactic federation or something like that do, do they still have a power structure do they still have they and uh you know my my guess is it, it's not a power structure it's just the instructions you know it's like it's like um like an orchestra you know some some are playing the 
the trombone and some are playing the flutes and some are playing the drums and so you could say the drums are the most powerful but it's not that they're powerful it's just that they're part of they're doing their part yeah. they're they're playing their part yeah. i somehow want to relate all of this to music they, i just have a feeling we have to get at some point we have to start understanding the vibrations of all of this because mm-hmm. when you when you are when you're closer to the center and certainly right right in the middle uh there's tremendous harmony everything is harmonic it um and the farther away you get from that the more disharmony and chaos ensues yeah um right i think it's i think it's a matter of you know tendencies some some people are are uh, drawn to the to the chaos and the drama and the darkness and the you know killing and murder and all of it and some are drawn to living a monastic life Hmm. so it's really about who we are is going to be highly defined whoever you are is going to be magnified that's the way that's the way it's feeling right i I love that uh image it is such a well before we do a um a guided meditation i just wanted to mention next week I'm going to be at Disclosure Fest in Las Vegas. Big uh, stairway. It's called Stairway to the Stars. They're going to be talking about human origins and UFO and alien disclosure. And there's going to be some mass meditation, ancient technology. There's going to be psychics there. Elizabeth April, the person I mentioned earlier, will be there. So, uh, And then people like Richard Dolan, James Fox, Nick Pope. Anyway, so... If, uh, you know, not that we have a lot of listeners, but just wanted to throw it out there. I'll, and I'll have a report back here when we, uh, to let you know what I, if anything interesting comes about there. <laughs> oh, that's going to be great. So are we not going to do next week? Is that the name of the game? Um, yeah, I think maybe we, that maybe we have to skip next week. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, cause well, I'll, I'll, we I'll be in the double up sometime. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, all right. I think it'd be, you ready to do a guided meditation then? Yeah, we'll just do a 10 minute. How's that? Fantastic. Okay. So let's begin with a little bell. So as we start to meditate, very often our mind is just full of chatter. So we're just going to recognize that. I'm just going to recognize that our mind is full of chatter. We're going to bring our awareness to our senses. What do we hear? What do we feel? Feel your feet on the floor. So with all this chatter in our mind, just imagine that you have been in a very noisy kitchen. Everybody's talking and and you're starting to walk away and the voices are going a little more into the distance and we're coming into awareness of the present moment where we are in space and time we can start to take a couple of deep breaths feel the life in our hands I'm going to take a nice deep breath in right now. Feel it all the way to the top. Feel that sense of fullness and then release it. Coming to the senses is a safe place to be for the most part when our mind is full of chatter. Our breath is always here. We can always just breathe in and breathe out. When you don't know what's true, 
what's real when you're feeling anxious just notice it and come back to the breath let your breath be your sanctuary the senses coming into the senses when you're really in the present moment, it's like slipping through a wormhole into another universe. Just quiet. Breathing in, breathing out. Sense that buzz of life, the sounds around you. Now let's raise our awareness up above your house, your building, your car, wherever you are, just expanding outward, upward, and see yourself. See yourself sitting there in whatever posture you're in. And this is just us. This is just us in this world together in this moment. When I wash my hands and I feel the water on my hands, I know that every human being that has ever lived has felt their water on their hands or the sound of water. Every animal. So let's just take a quiet minute to listen, using our ears to bring in sounds. Sounds that are just vibrations coming in and we decode them. We are receiving influences from some higher dimension, higher consciousness. This could be the second coming, who knows? But there's a lot of incredible wisdom coming through for a lot of people right now. Listen. Be receptive. Be open to higher influence and guidance. Where we put our attention with intention is what's creating our reality. That's pretty basic quantum physics, where you put your attention with an intention, you're changing your reality. So let's envision our common ground in this fourth chakra space of the heart. All beings want to be happy.
focus on your heart. Put your attention there. with this great wish for all beings to be happy. For all beings to be uplifted. To feel safe. and to attain greater wisdom. May it be so. Thanks, Matt. Thank you, Dora, once again. Until next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.